In Unreal Tournament, the aesthetic skybox, as I call it, is essentially a skybox that uses the subtleties of the Unreal Engine 1, like modulation and saturation via superimposition, to create a more visually rich and realistic skybox and setting. These are basically pretty rare, and they can be seen in a few uh, more elaborate maps or, or particularly map campaigns that have the uh, luxury of creating elaborate skyboxes that, that are going to be seen quite often by the player, as opposed to something like tournament maps where the player is going to be more focused on uh, killing whatever is in front of them. So what might look like an original but perhaps uh, conventional skybox might actually turn out to be a lot more complicated than you might have expected at first. So the first thing to point out here is that this is a tessellated, or pardon me, a tetrahedron. Um, and effectively here we just put an unlit or not lit uh, surface or texture depending on uh, basically your preference for the setting and this outer area is basically where all your other decorations go maybe like something like this which is actually a torch flame converted into a sprite and you do that by setting the style to translucent in display setting a texture for that so the second thing to take note of is this second layer which is a cone uh, and the height in proportion to the radius is uh, very small. That is to say that height over radius will be very small due to radius being a few magnitudes greater than the height. And that's what you're going to want to extend this gradient over and sort of stretch it over uh, as though it were actually kind of like a sky uh, strip of the sky, maybe on like some diff uh, planet with a different kind of atmosphere. And thirdly, there's an important feature, which is the, the flare that is superimposed onto this uh, torch flame, aka this sprite. And this is basically fixed, so due to the skybox also being fixed, this is what the player sees is uh, that glare that allows us to sort of add various features onto what would normally just be regular flare like so okay um, another thing to make note of is We just change this to Direct 3D, just to see here. Uh, within the cone, basically, that's where you're able to do a few uh, things. Usually, you won't want to uh, add too much within the cone because you already have so many things that you, you're uh, using in order to make it a skybox. Um, and this is basically uh, pointless, well not pointless, it's, it's trivial, doesn't matter what texture you have, th that's just the bottom, the player should never see that. Um, so th these are the clouds that are sort of just uh, going over mildly, and as you can see, if we just center ourselves near the um, skybox, effectively that's what we would be looking at is this. Uh, so, how do we begin? Okay, so the first thing you are going to want to have 
Uh, let's go ahead and go to the texture pack that's relevant to this. Is a gradient like this. Now, notice how small this is. Typically, you want this to be uh, two units in uh, that it's literally two pixels in width and two five six in in height, or four pixels in width, two five six in, six in height, because you don't need to to stretch that over with two hundred fifty six pixels in width. It, it does it itself because it's. It's repetitive, and you can essentially uh, make your own in Adobe Photoshop. Um, so, probably just to give you a basic sample of what you want to do, uh, you can open up Photoshop and begin by creating a 4x256 um, image. And if you're in Photoshop CS6, you might want to add a, a layer under it temporarily because there's some weird bug that doesn't accurately generate the, the border colors. So, of course, here you have your gradient. And this is essentially where you would pick your colors like... Um, Of course, you would want something that, that goes along with the rest of your sky. Maybe you want sort of like a sci-fi, uh, perhaps in some regard a technotic purple to, to light blue or something like that. Um, it would be up to you. Um, and, and let's just uh, translate this into something like like this. And of course, you can move it around, make uh, d define a certain degree uh, to which it begins to fade more strongly. And you're also going to want to, to of course. Um, make the gradient sort of, well, certainly the, the, the transition of color in the middle so that it doesn't... Uh, do the second thing you're going to want to do is generate a flare. You can do this also in Adobe Photoshop. Um, first, you have to make sure it's a grayscale image. Right? Um, so select something that's completely gray and also it it actually has to be a certain gray, uh, if I remember correctly, so... Um, here it's like... This gray, which is right here. Uh, because if you, mo if you s send anything modulated with a darker gray, you can see it. It has to be those values. So, probably along with that, let's maybe a good idea is to do this uh, and you use a soft brush and sort of approximate it. Maybe you want like something like that. Certainly, you can modify the opacity. Uh, you start out with something like this, maybe generate the saturation here with a little bit more okay and now you sort of increase that over to near white but not quite so you wouldn't want to put it to uh, full opacity just yet clearly that's not large enough Okay, something like that. Uh, of course, you can modify. Maybe you don't even want it to be that bright. Maybe you just want to do it like that. Then go ahead and, of course, exact image and everything. Uh, index index the color uh, and, and save your gradient, or, or rather your flare. 
Okay. So now that you have these two things, uh, and by the way, you can have multiple flares, like here it's only one superimposition, but uh, so long as you, you project it correctly at, a, at the correct angle, so that the skybox is convincing, you can have multiple flares. So you can have this one on top of this one. Uh, and, and at whatever distances between them are necessary. Now that you have those two things, you want to create uh, your, your cone. Well, first of all, you, typically you want a tetrahedron for this outside area. You want a large tetrahedron. I think this is like uh, 2048, uh, radius of 2048, and then this is a radius of 1024, this cone. Now what you're going to want to do is select all the surfaces of the cone, okay? And once you're ready, and then um, I believe you go to alignment, really quickly let's just make sure that there is no additional okay yeah so what do you want to do with your gradient is make sure that you have a large draw scale around 10 okay and then after that you select all the surfaces of your cone and, s and click align to floor okay um, I'm afraid that it'll crash if I do them automatically so just let's select them like this you can tell that this is already like modified and panned so select align to floor click that and then go to your texture alignment hold control down and um, left or right depending on the alignment to shift it over that's what you have now so now that you have your cone up um, and I put it back on D3D you're going to set up your flare. There are a few flares, I believe, in Sh Shane Sky is a good one. I think XBPFX has some, or or if you want something more spacey, SpaceFX. Um, those are your stocks that actually work quite well. You don't really need to shop around or make your own. And if essentially what you're going to do is want to position yourself here at where the skybox is with your viewpoint, uh, your viewport, okay, and using this other viewport, okay, and, and you can just, by the way, position it by clicking on the other camera. Uh, using this other one, you want to adjust the, the flare in such a manner that you align it along this uh, flare, which, by the way, is just a modulated surface. So it's just a flat surface and you make sure it's modulated. And again, you can have multiple layers of that. Another th thing you might want to do if you have uh, basically a similar concept with regards to the the gradient is make a very small cone here so you make a, a, a relatively small cone that that encapsulates your skybox instead of just having a flat surface and then do the same thing align to floor and and pan it with a slow pan which you can of course uh, go to the properties here and uh, select modify the panning so you can see the panning is very slow that's what makes these clouds move very slowly and finally you have uh, your surface your clouds uh, this is just a translucent sheet and like I said you can use a cone depending on your approach and uh, just make sure everything is aligned afterwards uh, there are a few interesting things that, that I experimented with I don't know if I ever um, got to actually seeing them through. 
You'll notice that there's... The sky is in, is in a like a gray haze. We're, I was trying out, if I recall correctly, seeing if uh, it would look nice to have a foggy sky box. And I don't remember if if it actually uh, went through. Obviously, it it didn't work out because. Uh, this, the sky, the zone info here was probably... Here it is. So the zone info here, I don't think it has uh, fog enabled. If it, it does have it enabled, I... Yeah, so you can see it's a uh, little bit more hazy. Um, so probably you could do something useful with that. Uh, use fog volumetric fog in your skybox but what you'd have to do is make it very small and and sort of partition it uh, along some area of the sky in order to make a contrast because if not it just kind of just uh, uh, colorizes it whatever color it is so you kind of have to be careful if you want to make that adjustment which is a bold adjustment it's very rare and this kind of sky is, of course, very rare as well. Um, another thing I wanted to point out uh, is the skybox in uh, the Zenith map Return to, or, or the Lost Home of Iskatel. Um, basically, it's very hard to make uh, horizons in, in Unreal Engine 1, very hard, because it's like there's no there's no mechanism specialized for it. Uh, so here's basically one of the best horizons I've ever seen uh, attempted. Um, and like I said, it's kind of there's a there's a limit to what you can do with respect to the, these kinds of skyboxes in um, Unreal Engine 1, but uh, let's go ahead and check it out really quickly. So basically what this is, is uh, kind of the same concept. You have a, another gradient, except you notice that this is sort of um, the sunset, as it were, uh, or part of it. Then interestingly enough, you have uh, this thing here, uh, which is a modulated sun, so it's not actually uh, a sprite and then you have like this this cloudy thing going on back here uh, all that was done in Photoshop and an important thing to note here is that you have to match the the scale of of the the, the water in the skybox to the scale of, of, of your map so that it, it at least seems to blend in uh, when the player is at, at the on the ground and here you can see that uh, this was a, a cone very small cone over the skybox like I said before but this is essentially the same uh, approach it's within a tetrahedron